so he was wearing a pale pink shirt with an open collar, light grey linen trousers, and brown suede loafers. Yeah. And he may have had a sweater because the train was air-conditioned. And what colour would his sweater have been? Oh, well, I'm tempted to say pink, but I'll just have to recheck his luggage. And he left all his luggage on the train? Yes, with his coat. I mean, the only thing that he had with him was his wallet and the uh, traveller's checks I told you about. And his passport. And his passport, yes. Lewis always kept his passport on him when he was travelling on the continent. He thought it was safer. Well, there's different schools of thought. What do you mean? You can't be sure what's going to happen in some of these places here, all sorts. Two sugars, did you say, officer? Uh, yeah, thank you. So what action will you take? Well, we'll talk to the French police this morning. We'll contact all the local hospitals and we'll get an alert out on his bank cards. I uh, spoke to the Gazette newspaper yesterday. Is that OK? Before contacting us? What a cheek. No, look, anything's worth a try. So, there was no other disagreement that you can think of? I mean, you hadn't had a falling out I've told or... you, we were having a perfectly pleasant journey after the most wonderful, relaxing holiday, and then poof! So this is totally out of character? Yes! Um... Well, there was the one time, I suppose, when he left without kind of an explanation. That's it. And how long was that for? Oh, I don't know. Roughly. 18 months, was it? Steve. <sighs> Steve, I know you're awake, so get up. What? Stop pretending you're asleep. I'm not stupid. In the middle of a dream, then. Yeah, well, we've no milk. Time to juice skulk back in. All right, ballpark figure. How long is this gonna last? How long is what to go in a last? This mood. I suggest the most sensible solution all round, and I'm the devil. You didn't suggest it though, did you, Steve? You just went in there waving your checkbook around like a flag. You weren't even there. Well, Ryan thinks I put you up to it. I was very discreet. I only said what everybody wants. For Ryan's sake, for our sake, for Amy's sake, Ken and Deirdre's sake, even Tracy's sake. I've come to grab some socks, keep talking. Listen, your mother had nothing to do with it. And all right, I could have been a bit more discreet. Tracy doesn't react well to hints. I don't react well to blokes paying my girlfriend to abort my baby. <sighs> you know, they're going to bring this child into the world now out of spite. You've given no other option. What? Well, if blaming me is more convenient, then fine. Oh, don't turn this round. I'm not turning anything around. Why am I always in the wrong? <laughs> I haven't got time to sit around and wait for common sense to prevail, which is why I got me checkbook out. But whatever. If I went about it the wrong way, then I'm sorry. Oh, what a heartfelt apology. Currently, the maitre d' at Byaduck Street Eatery next bistro Archer, who had been holidaying with his partner in the Mediterranean, was last seen at approximately 11.20 local time. They're an hour ahead of us, the French. On Saturday, shortly before the 10.56 Eurostar, en route from Brussels to London, arrived into Lily Station. It's Lille. What? It's pronounced Lille, not Lily. Oh, listen to you, Edith Piaf. What time's he coming down? He'll be down when he's good and ready. And remember... Don't answer the phone and don't open the post. You're a guest. Mr Archer's partner, ex-Lady Mayoress Audrey Roberts, is back in Weatherfield following her nightmare ordeal. It's a mystery, said Miss Roberts. He went to buy some refreshments from the buffet car. One minute he was there chatting to me, laughing and joking, and the next he was gone. But where? And with whom? Oh, he'll be in Brittany in some back street, sniffing around some madam's euros. Ms Roberts suggested that his disappearance was most uncharacteristic of him and will call on anyone with any information to come forward immediately. Oh, come on, Audrey, uncharacteristic. His middle name is Houdini. The man at Scarpered, and who can blame him? So, I suppose we'd better remain open-minded for Audrey's sake. Why will we? You've seen any minutes lying around? Minutes? Yeah, paperwork, Tracy. I've got a governor's meeting later. Oh, well, come straight home. 
Wendy and I are responsible people. Tell that to the judge. She and Deirdre managed to spend a whole afternoon together yesterday on the cake stall, and it was all extremely civil. Mum practically bit her own tongue off. Well, step in the right direction, nonetheless. <sighs> That's a sign of a good con man, isn't it? They win everybody's trust and then... bang. Get you dead impressed. Shame, really. Con men, trannies. She doesn't have much luck. Yeah, well, runs in the family. The female line only. Morning. Rest off your feet, I see. Yeah, well, we are chock a block from quarter past. Good, you are. Any news from Grasmere Drive? Just that she's convinced he'll come back. So am I. Based on what? I've looked him in the eye. He loves her. Which brings me to the business in hand. How'd you like to come and work for me? You what? Yeah, I saw you yesterday. Very impressed. <laughs> Hold on, cowboy. You can't just swan in here and start offering people jobs, profiting from Grand's misfortune. And anyway, she's a highly skilled nail technician. She's going nowhere. And do you reckon? Make me a stylist if you value me so much. Nowhere. It's a yeah. What? How are the cornflakes? Excellent. And the milk? Cold enough? It was perfectly chilled. Would you like some more toast? Please. Brown, white or mixed? Um, a mixture would be lovely. Oh, coming right up. <sighs> ah, good morning. Hello. Morning. Now, will you be wanting toast and cereal or a cooked breakfast, Mrs... Johannesburg? Oh! I think a cooked breakfast would be very nice. Shall be long. <sighs> Johannesburg. An unusual surname. Unusual family. South African. Swedish. What do you make of this one? Oh, Mrs. Price. Oh, she's a one-off. She's harmless enough. Go on, then. What would you rate it on a scale of one to ten? The bed and breakfast experience. <laughs> well, I've, uh... I felt very much at home. High praise, indeed. Why? Uh, how would you rate it? It's the best I've seen so far. So far? Well, you wouldn't necessarily know this, but the Rover's Return has entered a very prestigious competition. Oh, is that so? And I am one of the judges. Oh, dear. It seems the cat is out of the bag. I don't know what you're referring to. Suffice to say, Mrs. Price, you don't have anything to worry about. And I'm sure your mystery drinker will be just as impressed when he pays you a visit sometime later this week. I don't know what you're referring to. Very thorough, Lancashire Leisure. The mystery drinker isn't treated as a guest. He's every man. Joseph Public walking in off the street after a hard day's work. Oh, looks like you'll have to be on your best behaviour all over again, Mrs. Price. Russian night. Oh, yes. It's very fitting on a day like today. What with Lewis's astonishing disappearance from a high-speed train. Yeah, well, never trust a lady's man. I trust Norris. And of course, it'll be a further dent in the bistro's reputation. They were name-checked in the Gazette. Oh, well, let's hope so. <laughs> Are they still doing the complimentary breakfast? Ah, that one bit the dust. Oh, David won, Goliath nil. Can I have brown sauce on one of those, please, and red sauce on the other? Uh, yeah, of course you can. Oh, oh, oh. So, go on, then. What does Russian night entail? Well, we'll be starting off with borscht, which is a type of cold soup. Mm. Ooh, cold soup. Followed by stroganoff and plenty of blinis, which is pancakes to you and me. <laughs> oh, and Emily will be joining us to celebrate her birthday, so candles at the ready. Oh, well, that'll light up the room. <laughs> It'll burn the place down. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you reckon, then, Kurt? You up for a bit of Russian? I'm not really into foreign food, me. I, I prefer pizzas and kebabs. Oh. Well, I think you'll find our price list very competitive. It is simple food after after all. Oh, Hannah, I found you a fur hat to wear if you fancy it. Um, well, we'll see. Uh, Kirk, I've marked the brown sauce on with a B. Oh, did you know that was Beth's? <laughs> Jenna, it's your mum again. Please call me back. I'm getting worried now. I popped around again last night, but you're out. Or at least text me. Let me know that you're OK, even if you're not. I love you. How did I wind up in this mess? I'd like to say, don't look at me, but... What if this is it? 
Oh, come on, she's smarter than that. The shock will wear off. You hear about it, though. Family rifts that last forever. People always take it out on their mothers. Right? Well, that's it. It's official. Oh, good, good. You should have seen him, Dad, flirting with the doctor. It was embarrassing. Dr Carter? No, no, the other one, the woman. I was being friendly. Yeah, well, luckily, she's a right dog, so I wasn't that bothered. Oh, that's a relief for all involved. You know, he's always fancied himself as a bit of a charmer, but you can't fake it. Aren't you supposed to be at work? When I'm pregnant, are you out of your mind? You've left work? Already? Of course I have. I can't have my unborn child around kebab meat and I'd be on my feet all day. Well, it's impractical. I'm going to the pub. Oh, incidentally, uh, where will you live? You what? When the baby's born, where will you all live? Or, or should I speak to an architect, see if we can extend out of the back, you know, add a couple of rooms in the playroom, or maybe a penthouse uh, when you're entertaining, or maybe your mother and I should move out altogether and donate the whole house to you? It's a bit excessive. Don't eat that last to Claire. I'm saving it for Deirdre. No offence, but if I didn't like him, shoot me. Oh, gladly. Oh, don't worry, he's just bitter because he's old. He has lived in the same miserable little house his whole life. I mean, imagine that. Staring at the same four walls, the view into the yard, going to bed every night up the same stairs. It's pathetic. We should get away from here. Oh, what I would give. I'm serious, wouldn't you like to escape? I know somebody might have a spare room going. How'd you fancy Glasgow? Well, um, I'd never really thought about it. I mean, we'd have to look into schools and everything, but... Well, I don't see why not, in principle. I'll see what I can do. What would your mum say, though? Oh, she'd explode on the spot. Crack on, then. <laughs> and while you're doing that, I'll get you that eclair, eh? <laughs> oh, I still think we should have stayed put, you know. Well, if he gets home and you're not there, he'll come here or he'll call you. Yeah. I could sleep for a thousand years. <sighs> That's not a good idea. I'll put the kettle on. Well, um, we'll give it another hour or two. And if he's not back by then, we'll go for a drink. Is that a good idea? Oh, look, they can think what they like, Gail. They're going to look pretty damn silly when he turns up large as life with a perfectly good explanation. Mm. They are. Honestly, they, they, they made him out to be a cross between Cary Grant and the milk tray man. Well, judging by that photograph, he is. Oh, he's all quiff and false sophistication. Well, it sounds all right. Love carries a white stick, I suppose. <laughs> he's left it before, you know. Oh, yeah, when he robbed Peter Barlow and used Deirdre as a lubricant. Orange oh, juice, please. Yeah. <sighs> Steve, oh, have you heard that uh, Trace had resigned from the kebab house? Yeah, Dev told me. Greaseproof P45. Did Audrey take him back? Oh, yeah, with open arms. And you can't say as a blamer. That's the problem with a good-looking man. Yeah, it's not always cracked up to me, believe me. I used to go out with a bloke in the 70s, looked a bit like him. Well, it's quite possible that they're one and the same. But what was your boyfriend's name? Hafid. He was Moroccan. Oh, well, I, I suppose it's still possible. Orange. Ah. You all right? Right. I'm uh, just heading back. It's a little bit tense this morning. Hey, treading the next shells as well, eh? I'll tell you what, mate. Try living with it. Well, I'd rather you than me. Oh, and, and Steve, listen, uh, no hard feelings over yesterday. It's forgotten. Well, if, if I caught my girlfriend holding another bloke's hand, I... Uh, well, I don't think I'd have taken it as well as you did. A graduation. Wow. Proud moment. Johnny got leathered. A borderline embarrassing afternoon. Good old Johnny. Camping with the brownies. <laughs> a first night away from home. Where was that one taken? That was her 16th birthday at the Chard Oriental. Actually, it was Mr. Mans. <sighs> Look who it is. I'm uh, seeing a patient at half past, but I thought I'd say hello. 
Well, hello to you too. I got your messages. I should have responded. You're here. Forget about it. Still like Chinese food? Please. You have to physically restrain me. Those all-you-can-eat buffets, you should see their hearts sink when I walk in. <laughs> Johnny was like that. He'd go through the entire menu and then eat the menu. Well, I'm exaggerating, but you get the picture. We could go out tonight for something you fancied. Or even get a takeaway. Well, I fancy that. Jen? Maybe. <sighs> Throw me a bone. Come on, give your old mum something to smile about. <sighs> what time? So, if the mother of Steve's child is also the mother of his stepson's child, what does that make, Steve? An inbred. You can hear the banjo starting up, that's for sure. Amy, Michelle's stepdaughter, would be her grandchild's half-sister. And a cousin. Or, now, step-auntie. Mm -hmm. We should do a family tree, be like a spirograph. Michelle can lip-read. She's near breaking point already. Do not tip her over the edge. And I say that for everyone's sake. We were just talking about the order. Hi, gang. Hey, look who it is. We were just talking about use. What are you doing here? Have a word. I bet is a double agent with a license to thrill. Mm, doubt it. I'd be money penny to his bond. I don't mind telling you. The only license he's got is to rip off old ladies. No. Uh, please don't let us interrupt. Do you think he could be a spy? He hasn't got the wit to be a spy. And you have? Imagine dropping you behind the iron curtain. You'd make a decent mole. Is uh, your bank account intact? Yes, it is, Norris. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, mm, let me see. You're very quiet, Ken. Sorry, uh, um, at a loss. I bet he's loving it. No, 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 far from it. I'm on your side, Audrey, but. Uh, Problems of my own. Oh dear, is your book overdue? Ken, I'm, I'm sorry. I just... It's all right. It's all right. Glasgow. Look, I, I believe you didn't have anything to do with yesterday, but it's made us reconsider all our options. Right, so you're doing all this because of Steve, then, are you? We, we, we feel hemmed in. It's not just you and Steve. I mean, my mum and dad are even worse. This should have been one of the happiest moments of our lives, but instead we're constantly defending ourselves. Everyone thinks we're a joke, no one thinks we'll last. Why should we hang around? Right. So what are you going to do then, Rai? Hmm? Going to put up a tent in the local park? A mate of mine's got a spare room going in a house. Oh, a shared house. Nice. Full of students, is it? He's a young professional, graduated last year. Oh, man of the world, then. You see, this is what I'm talking about. Every time I try and take responsibility for my own life, you make sarcastic comments like I'm still a 12-year-old. And he's all right with it, is he? A family of three moving in, including a child. And by the way, I'm talking about Amy, not Ryan. He's absolutely fine. He sounds like a really chilled-out bloke. Yeah, well, he's going to need to be, isn't he? Can I have a few words with my son in private, please, Tracy? <sighs> You familiarised yourself with the coffee machine yesterday. Did you see the look on David's face? <laughs> I spent my whole life seeing the look on David's face. He'll be grateful of the extra money. He should no faith in me. Uh, bottled lagers, ales. Yeah, why should I have stayed? Well, spend an hour with the wine menu, see what goes where, ask as many questions as you like. Uh, hi, what can I do for you? Is this where Lewis Archer worked? He was asking. All right, then. <clears throat> Worst case scenario, yeah? Move to Glasgow, mate puts you up, gets have a little job, and then what? Hmm? What you gonna you're gonna upgrade, are you, to a three-bed semi in the suburbs? Who knows, maybe we'll settle in a culturally dead little back street like you did. Tracy's prepared to go wherever her spirit takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Tracy's prepared to go many places, all of them very low. Maybe if dad was still alive, it... <laughs> what? What, you think your dad had just let this all sail through, do you? <sighs> your dad died, Ryan. Your dad died. Along with every other bloke that we might have turned to right now. So I'm sorry, mate. Bad luck. It's just me. And you know what? I did not find it easy losing him. Or Paul. Or Liam. But I've tried. And I've tried and I've given everything to make sure that you always had a roof over your head. 
and that you had the chance to live your life because I couldn't. I thought Grandma and Grandma gave you loads of handouts. I beg your pardon. You know what? That just proves you're still a child. And she's running rings round you. You poisonous, devious cow. Oh, what have I done? Just get out. Michelle. I said get out. You know, you can't talk to me like that because I am pregnant. I'll kill you. No, you won't. You do not deserve a son like him. Come here! You're making a fool of yourself! No, Ryan, you're making a fool out of me! Oh, look at me, I'm shaking. Come on, let's go, it's not good for the baby. You lot, ten to five, class dismissed. Race you to the Rovers. What do you say, Mum? Well, nothing from any of the hospitals. Oh, that's a relief. Well, it isn't, it isn't, Gail. Come on, at least he'd be accounted for. Keep the faith, ma'am. Sandra's been on the phone again. As if a hen in Dublin wasn't enough, she's invited me to Menarche. When? This week. Are you going? What, leaving you home alone again? Yes, love. I'm not stopping long. I've got nothing in for Craig's tea. Don't want milk and toast again. It's not right. Good afternoon and welcome to the Rovers. Oh, glow I'd lose that if I were you. It's friendly. Oh, I like it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Rovers. Nick? Mum. Gran. Hi, love. Penny, this is Audrey Roberts, Lewis's significant other. Gran, this is Penny. She might be able to shed some light on Lewis's baby. Oh, my goodness. Do you know where he is? No, but I know why he got off that train. Yeah, go on. He saw me. I've never seen anyone move as fast. So you are? Let's just say we've got unfinished business. And we return to Coronation Street in half an hour.